G'day, this is Gary007 and welcome to my channel. Uh, if you like this sort of content, don't forget to leave a like, um, hit the subscribe button, uh, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment below in this section if you wanted to. Uh, so today is, I wanted to talk about uh, base building in the Rift Breaker. Uh, and also, this is really sort of a beginner's guide, but um, try and give some people out there that have picked up the game a bit in to try and push them in a particular direction in order for you to play the game better I guess what I'm what this video is basically about is I, I don't I'm not going to cover every single thing within this game but I wanted to cover things uh, pertaining to certain ores now I'm not going to cover every ore in this game or every material uh, build but I wanted to talk about some of the basic ones uh, first in this video now the first Material I wanted to talk about. Iranium now, storage is full. Build more storage facilities. Oh, thank you very much. But cobalt is a very precious ore that you need uh, when playing this game. Now, when you start off in campaign, you're going to get introduced to all of these different elements that you'll be able to mine. Now, these mine these these materials are going to open up your ability to upgrade your uh, defense towers. Um, and also other buildings within your base and you'll slowly get introduced to them as you go along in the game I've played the through on the game through on uh, Normal and on hard and I've played survival mode now this video is sort of centered around survival mode but you'll be able to pick up what I'm trying to put down and you'll understand what I'm really talking about when I come, when it comes to ore because what ore you discover in the map dictates what sort of defense towers you're able to put up in a map if you know where I'm going with this. So this one is uh, Carbolt um, ore. So this is a common ore that you'll be able to get in a lot of your maps. So when you're playing survival mode, it's crucial to get carbol, and there's several reasons why you want to get this particular material, right? So if we go into our uh, we go into our base building, our research tree. Now this is a research tree for the Rift Breaker for those that don't play the game. What carbol uh, essentially unlocks for you is sentry towers. So you're able to upgrade your sentry towers. You can't do that with if you don't have Carbolt. Uh, so when you start off in the game, you'll be placing a lot of sentry towers down. I tend to put a lot of sentry towers down, as you can see. This is a sentry tower, level 3. Uh, when you start off, you'll be putting a lot of them down. And, and it's really easy to upgrade your base when you have sentry towers placed down. Now... There's also the other thing that also it um, allows you to do is it allows you to put down repair towers, right? Now you can place repair tower down, but the upgraded ones are the ones that really uh, bring your base alive and helps survivability. So that's a huge, huge plus. Another one also, if you don't have Carbolt, you won't be able to put attack drones down. All these attack drones require Carbolt upgrades. And so the repair towers, because you've got repair towers that sit in behind your main point defences. And then you can put your attack drones down. But also, uh, mine laying towers as well require Carbolt. And so you've got several things off the bat that require Carbolt. And if you can't find it on a map, uh, the best thing you can do uh, when looking at a research tree is maybe go into carbide um, handling so what this does this technology when you research it if you hold down your space button it allows you to start looking for raw materials which you may have learnt when you played the campaign it is super important to be able to find the materials you need uh, in survival mode because I'm sort of talking about survival mode a lot because that's really uh, that, that's that's that how hel that helps you um, be able to complete survival mode is being able to find these rare elements. Now, Carbolt um, um, has several factors that that really make the game a lot easier for you. Now, it is a common material. However, I have played on maps where I have not been able to find any. But 
On this one, um, I was able to find it, and I was only able to find it because, not because it was a vis um, visible on the map, but because, you know, I was searching for it, right? Just like that, you sort of run around and you search for it. The other most important thing to research is uh, uranium. Now, uranium is something that you're going to have to look for is the next most important material. Now, there's some um, uranium ore here that I found. Uh, it's not very far away from my base, my main base. I'm up there. Um, so what is uranium ore? What's so important about it? The biggest thing about uranium ore is having artillery towers. Your artillery towers, if you look at these these particular artillery towers, I'll show you a bunch here, there's, there's artillery towers. To upgrade these artillery towers, you need, you need uranium. And essentially, um, sorry about flicking around like that, but essentially, when you go down the artillery towers, uranium is required to upgrade them. It is super important to be able to upgrade your artillery towers. There will be map, maps where you won't be able to find uranium, but when you're able to finally find it, start mining it as soon as possible. In order to mine it, you have to come down this side of the tree. Uranium handling, um, and what you want is a uranium centrifuge. Now, the uranium centrifuge essentially... I can I don't I wonder where I put it. I did see it here before when it was mucking around. Sorry about that. So anyway, if you if you put down a uranium centrifuge, basically what it does is um what it does is it refines the re uranium, right? To so you're able to build your artillery towers. So cobalt is a really essential for your base building and survival mode um, and any game through playthrough right and uh, uranium is a huge boost to your base and your base defenses you because you're able to put out a lot of dps with a tier 3 tower now the next important uh, material that i want to show is titanium so titanium is another all right that uh, you want it, you'll find it on the map. I've never really struggled with titanium. There's always some titanium around when it spawns, right? You always seem to find a lot of it. Uh, it's 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 essential for a couple of defense towers that I like to put down, right? So I'm trying to find them. It. it might not be over. Oh, there it is. So I've got one here. Uh, mini gun tower. Mini gun towers are pretty awesome. And also, uh, if you were to put down a flame throwing tower, it needs titanium. Your mini guns um, need titanium. Your flame thrower, and also your rockets, right? So your rocket towers. So there's three towers that need titanium, and are super, super important. The the mini gun is really, really awesome to look at when it's firing, and I love the flame thrower tower also as well as the rocket tower so these towers are something you can put down immediately but what it does is it when you're going down the sentry tower if you've got cobalt and you've got titanium you're able to come in here and go down your mini gun right the last material the least important material is platinum now i have to i think it's over here ironium storage is full build more storage facilities. Yeah, platinum um, ore. Now this is not really super crucial because the uses of it are very limited and one of the uses is plasma towers. So plasma towers are something you can build um, using uh, platinum. Now, <coughs> sorry for the pronunciations and stuff like that a little bit off. So what's my point? My point is if you do can't find cobalt on a map don't go down the repair tower route. If you don't, don't go down the sentry route and upgrading. If you can't find titanium, don't even bother going down and getting miniguns because you can't use them. 
Um, if you can't find Carbolt, uh, again, don't go down and getting drones or uh, mine laying. Because mine laying is another one down here, which is super, super important for base defenses, right? So, try to prioritize, try to find the ores that you do need. And if you cannot find the one that you're after, uh, try and use a scanner and go around and try and scan for it and try and try and find out where it is. Oh. I must have um, blocked this out. Oh. <laughs> yep, that's it. So another tip I wanted to sort of point out is uh, how do you go about researching your tree, right? So so we have a basic research tree. How would you, how would I, how do I go about it? So I'm going to share my experiences, right? When you first start off, uh, we'll go back to the main base right over here. When you start off, you start off with a little base. Oh, there's a centrifuge uh, there. They're just working overtime to produce uh, uh, uranium, right? So... What what I what you need to do when you first start off is you need to be able to upgrade your headquarters. You only have to do this once, right? When your headquarters are ready to do, you'll upgrade your headquarters, right? And and you you would know that by by playing the game, essentially. I can't stand seeing anything too that needs repairs. So, this is an old playthrough. Uh, so I'm not too concerned about the incoming wave attack um, on survival. So I wanted to talk about uh, your build queuing. Right. So for yourself, when you wanted to build queue, you want to head down the headquarters path, right, to level 5. Get that far. And what that will do is allow you to um, put communication hubs up, right? So when you research down to level 5, you're able to get these research hubs. You can start putting more than one down at a time. I'm about to get attacked now. <laughs> so it's going to ruin this video a little bit. So I'll try and stay in the tech tree a little bit. So try to cub down uh, when you're researching. Now remember this will all be clear and reset when you're playing it. Try to come down to about uh, headquarters 5. Uh, build a lot of these communication hubs. And it speeds up your, um, your downloads you, so you're able to research. The next thing you want to do is obviously if you've got if you cannot find the ore that you need on a map in survival, I, I suggest you get carbolt handling. Right. And then you want to go down into uh, liquid resources handling, level 1. And then come over to basic resource production, level 2. You want to get this ASAP, right. When you're doing this, you're going to be... Your storage facilities are going to be at capacity uh, because every all the level one facilities um, uh, are really you need a lot of them. So as you obviously go up in the tech tree, uh, the less likely you'll need a lot of them, and you can start consolidating a lot of your base a lot more and more as as you start upgrading your base more and more. Right? So you're going to want. Um, you want to come down and get your basic resources, right? Once you've got your basic resources, there's, there's a couple of possibilities, and it really depends on what resources. If you've got crude oil, if you've got uh, uranium, come over and get uranium handling and get your uh, uranium centrifuge so you can uh, produce your artillery towers, which are over here, right? So... When you come down, you can do your defensive buildings, uh, get your tower ammunition handling, and then get your artillery towers, right? There's two trains of thoughts here, right? So if you've got your artillery, if you've got uh, uranium, you found your uranium, get your uranium handling, uh, get your basic resource production up, and then come over and get your artillery towers, right? The second thing that you want to do in the build order is come over into your mech, 
Right, so you want to come down and research your mech. Um, and you want to research explosive weapons. And you want to uh, research liquid uh, weapons like your flamethrower. Now your flamethrower is good on every map apart from your the biodome, which is your magma biodome, right? So the alternative for your magma bi biodome weapon, a good weapon, would be an energy weapon like this, where uh, they just melt, right? Um, energy weapon, this energy weapon is good no matter what. And so is your explosive weapon. I have not been able to get off the grenade launcher. It is the heart and soul of this build, right? So why would you come over and do this next? It's because the game will start feed. You'll have to do activities in the game. It will force you to take care of uh, a yeast infection. I don't, it's not a yeast infection, is it? <laughs> but um, Or you're going to have to kill some ads in the map uh, where you're killing time in between waiting for waves to come at you. The other thing you're really coming down in this tree for as well is armory level. The more, as you upgrade your armory level, the more armory level uh, armories you're going to be able to have. This is it. We've defended our base long enough to initiate the final rift opening oh. sequence at headquarters. The rift is going to send out intense energy so waves this is at a, a survival large distance. Mode, right. It's going so to provoke the strongest attack yet. Hang on. Options. Hang on. Sorry about this. Settings. Audio. Uh, I'll just turn it right down. Right. Confirm back to the game. We have to prepare as much. So as you want to be building armories, and what armories do is, is they during the charge up phase, they uh, they're able the to reproduce explosion. ammunition, survive, right? Or it's game over. And There's once you start start getting, once you get a couple I of buildings at the start. Oh, sorry about that. Once you get a um, a couple of your armories going, get you might only need one at the start, right? Around mid-game, you can build another one. At the end of the game, you can build maybe one more if you feel greedy enough. But these armories will basically produce ammo for your towers. If your towers run out of ammo, you're going to run into a lot of trouble. The other side of it too, because you've come, in, come into tower ammunition and handling level 1. I'm going to turn this game down a lot more. Just so we'll be able to... Uh, options. Settings. Auto, uh, audio, uh, confirm. So you want to be building a lot of uh, tower ammo factories, right? So you get a couple of ammo factories producing and you get a, um, ammo tower storages. Uh, you'll be building a lot of them because you'll be getting smashed by waves of enemies. As you can see on the map, there's lots and lots of enemies coming in at me. I'm not too concerned. I've got a well-protected base down there. We can come and have a look at how these level 3 towers are going. I'm not even going to get involved here. Um, this is survival mode. I've completed the game. I'm not too concerned about what's coming in at me. But... Um, your ammo towers will... Your ammo, you'll notice that if you've played the game through once or so... You'll notice that your ammo towers will run out of ammo if you don't produce, don't have enough um, ammo storages or and also um, uh, armories. So you need to be able to be juicing armories. Uh, get a couple going and you won't run out of ammo. You don't have to worry about it. Now they will bleed resources off you. That's why you need to be able to get basic uh, resource production. Now if you have, depending on the map you're in, Right, and once once you've cracked your first, um, uh, once you once you've done your first research and you're able to uh, start building stuff, what you can do is you can, um, once you get into this uh, research center, what you can come up to, and you can come up to crafting and come over here, and you can create a bunch of these armor platings. Right, so what? And then you can you can stack them on you, and you can stack them on you in the beginning of the game, and you can be quite OP to start off with, right? So you can do a lot bunch of crafting at the start, make your mech pretty strong, uh, make sure you're carrying around uh, grenade launchers, uh, also any mods you pick up, you could you can mod it out, but 
when you're playing this game, right, in survival mode, you're not going to have a lot of time in between your hands. You're going to be very, you're going to be, your your time efficiency, you're going to have to focus on the on, on what's needed to win the game. So make sure you get all your arm upgrades done like that, uh, your beginning stuff. It's really quick and simple. Uh, the other thing also, when you when once you've done that, um, if you've got Carbolt, um, what you can do is start researching repair towers, start putting some retail, uh, repair towers down, um, and also start upgrading your Sentinel towers. Now, I know it's not sexy in the grand scheme of things when it comes to a game, but upgrading your uh, Sentinel towers is basically free, right? It, it's it's not free, but that's what I'm saying is if you've got Carbolt um, and you've found a Carbolt deposit, you're able to upgrade your Sentinel towers. Now, Sentinel towers are the lowest DPS towers. However, when you start a game, when you start a match, right, you'll be you'll be uh, you'll be plant you'll be plopping down a lot of these sentinel towers to start off with to defend your base, right? So why not upgrade them where you've got the chance? So that's why it's very important to find uh, the materials that you need on a map. And if you can't find those materials then you don't want to be coming the only reason why you want to be coming down here is to get a mini gun towers, and these mini gun towers off um, operate off titanium, right? But it takes a while to research your way down and to get a mini gun tower, right? So it is very important to aim for the particular defense towers, and don't research everything willy nilly. Is is what I'm trying to say. Concentrate on the material you have, and then work out. I'm only going to build this tower because this is this is because you essentially want to in survival mode get to level three um, towers. Oh, they're still coming in, right? So this is like a basic outpost, and as you can see, the mini towers are just just and level three artillery are just absolutely shredding everything apart, and it's kind of funny to watch, right? Because it, these everything's um, upgraded in this map, and this is just double walls and stuff like that. So it's essential to get your towers to level three. Don't be fooled by people saying drones are no good. They are super super handy because if you're not able to get upgraded artillery towers, the next best thing is drones because drones have a huge range on them, right? So drone. Drones are able to attack at such a great distance, right? So um, I use them in place of artillery towers if I can't find uranium. The other thing I wanted to talk about is, um, so yes, if you've got Carbolt, go down repair towers. Uh, they make a huge difference uh, incoming. So as you can see, repairs, see how the repair tower is working? I've got three here, the level three. Um, and you wouldn't think it, but the belly got touched, right? So let's have a look at this repair towers. They are, I've got a couple here. They're just doing their job. Nothing to worry about. It's just another day in the office, right? So repair towers make or break uh, your face, base defenses. You can build a base without repair towers. I have done it when I couldn't find Carbolt. Like I said, there was a particular map that I played on. Uh, it was, I think, the Magma Biodome where I could not find Carbolt. I got a couple of Carbolt um, uh, uh, deposits, but no no real deposit. So that's super important. And yeah, your base will look after itself. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about also in your build order is... Your energy will depend on the map you're on, right? So when you've got energy, oh, I'll just come over here. Your en don't worry, don't get too confused about the energy, right? So some maps benefit from uh, investing in energy, right? So coming down here, coming down to the side of renewables, right? So you got renewable energy uh, level two there with your geothermal plus your solar panels and your wind turbines. So it makes a huge difference. So on the jungle map, 
you, your your wind turbines and your solar panels do quite well, as well as your geothermal thermal or your gas power plants. All of those do quite well on a map like this. Uh, other maps, they don't do so well. You rely on gas turbines and stuff like that, which is down in this tree down here. If you go down here, that's where all your gas turbines. So you need to think about your build order when it comes to your energy, what map you're on, what energy you need for that particular map. Like the swamp map, you need you want to go for your gas energy turbines. Uh, it doesn't benefit much off your wind and solar. Then you go to your desert biome. Well, that you can just build solar panels, upgrade them, and then your uh, storages. Uh, even your energy storages, you can't upgrade them unless you've got cobalt as well, which is kind of interesting. When it comes to your base defenses, uh, always upgrade them. Upgrade them next to level two. So once you get to them to level two, once you got your power, uh, once you got your basic defenses down to level two, uh, upgrade your base defenses and then upgrade your storages. Now you need to upgrade your storages because you're going to be struggling uh, to be able to keep everything in check, and then upgrade your basic resources again. The faster you can get your um, basic resource production up, the better it is in being able to handle the end game. So in survival mode, you want to front load uh, your basic resource production, get your walls up, get your basic towers up, um, get your mines up and running, and try to protect them the best you can, right? So the alien tech tree is worthless when it comes to survival mode. You just don't go down it. The only tree you need to go down is your base and buildings and weapons and equipment and in survival. You only ever need explosive weapons and flamethrower level one. If you've got the luxury of going down this tree a little bit further, then you can upgrade uh, your explosive weapons even more. Massive DPS, or I would recommend getting an energy weapon. Now, some people like to go melee. Uh, it never really does anything for me, to be honest, um, in my uh, line of thought. I do like going down and getting sentry guns. I don't know why, but yeah, I do. But mainly in survival, you're really coming down in here to get two weapons um, and upgrade your armory, and then it help with production of your towers and so on and so forth. So that's just a rough overview of that. Now, when it comes to base defenses, right, so... I want to come back to my base and talk about it. So, as you can see, um, mines are awesome, right? To me, mine laying towers is good. Now, as you can see on the map, oh, I won it. See, you won the game. <laughs> uh, continue, right? So, all right. So, I've got a trophy. So, these mine laying towers are good. They they do a lot of damage for incoming uh, attacks. Now, I have two sets of... Uh, I have my base laid, right? So generally, uh, you can inf reinforce the corners, which is I do. I put down, like... I'll put down a couple of wires of wall. Then I might put down another two, like that. And then you put your defences like that, and then probably put an artillery tower in the back there, right? And what that does is it essentially means that the enemy or the units have to go through here. They have to smash through two sets of walls and another two sets. So four sets, four walls in total. They would have to um, they would have to um, get through before they get to your base. Now, I've found that to be the best layout. Uh, once you get to level 3 walls, it's pretty hard for uh, any units to get through two layers of walls. But when you're starting out, uh, they can get through level 1 walls rather quickly. So I like to space them out like this and then put what I need to put in the middle. And then I'll put my repair towers at the back and I'll put my artillery at the back as well. Another thing that you can do, right... So as you can see, my basic uh, base layer would be like this, like um, your basic layer. And then you you see me sort of building out a fair bit. Now, built out like this is because um, essentially you're going to have um, 
the enemy run at you uh, at the closest point. So at the closest point now is my base where I'm mining um, uh, uh, uranium, right? So they, the enemy will essentially come down and run into those closest, uh, closest points. So that's what they do on a base as well. They'll probably hit this before they, they hit one of these side walls, you know, coming in at me. And I build it like that on a, on purposely so that they sort of, they'll come at this way um, and probably not attack me coming in an angle like this, right? So, and you put extra, extra walls and stuff like that on the corner. And I always have like my mine laying towers like this, right? So that they'll hit a bunch of mines before they come in and attack my base here. I also do on particular maps. I might I might actually go like this. I'll um, sorry. I'll try and bring it over here. So another thing you can do is actually build out with your base. And I do this if I'm getting swamped or I'm getting really um, charged at. So you can you can build out here, right? And you can build your mine laying towers, right? And And what you're essentially doing is covering more ground with your mines. Now, your mines do a massive, massive amount of damage. And always make sure you put rift portals, right? So now you're going to be able to, if you go work up here, give it a bit of time, you're going to have mines laid all the way across your map, further out from your base. So you, you can do that as a tactic. I've done it on the Magna Biome. I've done it on other maps. I didn't do it on this map. I didn't feel like I was getting threatened enough. I wanted the enemy to actually come in so I could start killing them. But yeah, that's that's the sort of the essential base lane uh, beginner's guide uh, to the Rift Breaker. Now, if you like this sort of content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Uh, leave a like and comment below about how you lay, like to lay out your base. Oh, before I actually go, right, uh, I wanted to show you something else about uh, base layout, right? So essentially, um, you'll notice that I have a big open area, right? So, oh, upgrade that. So you can actually kite them in like this, and the mobs will come in here, and it'll be like a kill zone. Oh, maybe that's not a bit good example. I do have a better example over here, I think it is. Sorry. Yeah, in here. So this is essentially a kill zone, right? So mobs come in here. You're slashing away, protecting yourself. And they will actually follow you into the kill zone. And you've got your turrets and that, killing everything like that. It sort of works like that in, in regards to um, uh, like the smaller mobs. Sometimes they'll go for your t uh, walls and sometimes they'll follow you into a kill zone. And... Um, yeah, that's another way of setting up your base, but uh, it only works on narrow spa uh, passages and stuff like that, like this. But yeah, anyway, not for me waffling on. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, leave a like, comment below, and don't forget to subscribe to my little YouTube channel. All right then, see you later, guys. Bye. <laughs>